Hey everyone, welcome to the Family Business Podcast. My name is Dominique Sampson. And my name is Malobi Sampson II. And on this podcast, we're going to talk about everything from relationships, careers, God, therapy. Listen, we are talking about it all. So sit back, relax, and let us take you on the adventure of a lifetime. Hey, hey, hey. How's it going, guys? Welcome back. Welcome back. Good to be back. To the Family Business Podcast. Okay? Indeed. We're so glad that you're back. And if you missed us last podcast, jump on here on your way to work, girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever you are, and take a listen. We got into the deepness, right? We were talking about... um our commitment to one another and how we agreed to always come back and talk about the issues that yes. we had in our relationship and have in our relationship and how that has been a pillar. Mm-hmm. Um, so go back and watch that if you are interested today, 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 today. we're going to talk about that scripture you brought up last time that in the last podcast. Yeah. Yeah. In the last podcast, And that was so good. Um, So can you take us in there uh, again? If they didn't tune into the last podcast, can you, can you tell us what that scripture was again? I can. So this first Peter chapter three, verse seven, really good scripture says in the new living translation, in the same way you husbands, this is who is being addressed, must give honor to your wives, give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding <laughs> you doing this like deep? as you live together. <laughs> she may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should. So your prayers will not be hindered. Man, gut punch right there. <laughs> right. Like the real for me, when I first heard it, the gut punch was at the end when it was like, so my prayers can be blocked. <laughs> Dang, bro. So you, you got like a LeBron James. You got like a, mm-hmm. you know, an AD. You got somebody sitting there. You got a shot guarding the rim. And every shot attempt I put up when I'm in a place of not living with my wife in an understandable way is being blocked. What? Yeah. But God, I'm really trying to pray to take care of this family. Blocked. But yeah. Lord, oh my goodness, you don't understand. Da, 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 blocked. Yeah. But God da, da, blocked. And so for me, I was like, whoa, whoa. It is more important in God's eyes that I should treat her right, that I should treat her with understanding. Yeah. And it made me even like come back to, I remember there was a time, every now and again when, when this uh, scripture convicts me and makes me, and I'm reminded of it, I think to myself like, Honey, do you feel understood? Mm. Do you feel like, and I know we said people typically respond on how they feel. Right. Right. right? But from what I am seeing here in this scripture, a lot of times, and I think even in today's culture, there's this interesting thing where you were mentioning before how women take on this idea that they're strong and independent. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. Right. And I'm like, in one sense, I'm like, yeah, I want my daughter to feel like she can conquer the world. I don't know. The older I get, I'm trying to be a damsel in distress. That's hilarious. <laughs> and the interesting thing, though, is like it says here that she's weaker. Mm-hmm. And when I hear that, sometimes I think it's heard and interpreted as, as men are stronger. We're mm-hmm. better. We can do it all. As in better or worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And recently I was listening and passing to Jordan Peterson uh, correct someone's perspective on the Bible. And I don't even know him to be a professing Christian, right? A lot of times people ask him, and he's like, the text is just so real. Like he kind of talks around it. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying he isn't or he is. I believe his wife is a believer, mm-hmm. which is awesome. And so he said, nowhere in scripture does it say women are not equal to men or they're, tre- they're subservient to men Mm. and so he said when you looking throughout it he was like when it when you even see them described as weaker or he was like well yeah because they're going to be having child 
like with child, pregnant, <laughs> like they're going to have to give birth. And so like he said it kind of in passing. And he's like, so if you're not taking the time to understand the text, then like it's not my job. And he was really talking about his book. If you're not taking the time to understand his book, it's not his job to interpret it for you. But when he made that point, I was like, just, like a man doesn't have to like for nine months be carrying around a whole extra person in their stomach <laughs> and then like oh man i'm hungry right now oh man i'll eat you i'm gonna punch you in the head like they're not going through all of those things <laughs> you think that's what i thought i when you were pregnant <laughs> i first knew because of how you were obsessing over this piece of chicken <laughs> while we were in ghana west africa on a mission trip and i was like my wife doesn't like chicken like that so where is this a new obsession it was it was okay you know what i mean but like i was like dang near ate the bone like i was was like come on almost chewed your finger off how you was consuming that chicken (laughs) and i was like sums off (laughs) and i walked up to you and i said are you okay (laughs) you're like yeah what's going on and I was like, the first way all, you're going in on this all, chicken. Do not do my. Okay, you didn't eat it like eating that. Like that. Right, okay. you didn't eat it like that. I did not do no. <laughs> but it was, I was shocked because I was like, something is interesting. Which, funny uh, closure moment. Mm-hmm. Our son, who's a young child now, loves nice. chicken. Loves chicken. Loves chicken. And like, I'm like, Man, give him chick like turn into a first chick. time he had Chick Fil A, he was like, "Oh, what y'all been holding out on?" I know I was getting breast milk, but dang, <laughs> y'all been eating like this. So now, whenever we, eat, he's looking at us like, "What you got over there?" Is it chicken? But anytime today it's anything else, he makes a face, which is hilarious. Does. But today I gave him chicken and plantains together, sweet plantains together, mm. and he looked like, "Oh, you took the chicken to another <laughs> level." <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a new son. level, <laughs> son. Right. That's that Puerto Rican in you, boy. Yeah, but wrong. but when you're talking about this, um, I you know I like words, and so I looked up understanding and understand, and um, <laughs> I was gonna make a joke, but I won't. Um, this word uh, in the English language means to perceive the intended meaning of the speaker, right? Mm-hmm or to interpret or view something in a particular way. And when you're talking about, you know, God saying to people, because we know that all word is God inspired, you know, so whoever wrote it, God was the one who was inspiring things. And so when you're saying, when you're saying God is saying to understand your wife, um, or else your prayers are hindered. I think that's a huge thing because he's saying literally come outside of yourself and get in her shoes and interpret this matter, how she views it, perceive her intended meaning of this particular thing. I think about that in a lot of instances. It's going wait, let me jump yeah, in here yeah. real quick. Cause you, you bulldoze into a lot of good stuff. <laughs> First, you said the word is inspired by God. Yeah. Sometimes our English language does a disservice to the original meaning yeah, behind true, words. True, true. And so that word inspired that we see in scripture is really translated. God breathed it. Yeah. And so it is not the equivalent of, well, I felt inspired to get up and write a book today. <laughs> and the book could be a best selling book. But it is not the inspired word of God. There, there is a distinction between those two things. Right, right, right. And so, God's word is literally God breathed. Right. Like they could not, on their best day, have written this thing. Mm. It literally could have only been out of the mouth of God That's awesome. for this thing to be written. That's awesome because a lot of us have the ambition to do stuff, and literally, you know, some of us are the ones that are like, "When I feel motivated, then I'll do it." Yeah, But these folks are like, I'm constantly seeking God so that if the motivation strikes at any given time, I'm ready. But when I feel him speak or when I know he's speaking, then that's when. Only when he speaks. Only when Do he I speaks. write what he says. So Only I don't add speaks. it. It's not when I'm reading scripture. It's not my opinion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's what God said. Right. 
which is like a different thing because now even when we're reading this scripture, it's mm-hmm. not, let me inspire your marriages really quick. <laughs> Husband, you want a secret tip? Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> and it's like, no. No. Understanding husband. Yeah, yeah good marriage right like you're and not even that the the tag is your prayer isn't hindered isn't blocked exactly and the other point that i wanted to slow down on that you said was the understanding get in her shoes Mm -hmm. this says treat her so not only do you get in her shoes Mm -hmm. but now that i understand what she's doing i need to change how i'm acting to treat her as i understand her which is uh so hard to do. What? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's dying to yourself. This is all of the cross itself. It's like it's ever. It's literally like. So stupid. Oh, you. Oh, you felt a certain way. That's great, but your wife's understanding is off. Yeah. But Lord, I'm upset. I don't care. You know what I mean. So it's like, it's. It, you're right. It's, it's almost hard. like two children. You know how children are playing, and it's like, but he took my toy. But what did you do to him? I smacked him. Well, go back and like you know, it's kind of like nobody gets to win here yeah. until you go back and, and make it right. Exactly, and to have you know have that agreement. Yeah, and because guys like you want to talk to me, and you you're exactly. you can't even talk to the person you live with. Right, right. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Go fix it. Exactly. Exactly. Go fix it. I should get a shirt that says go fix it. Go fix it, right? Go fix it. Check out the merch website. I'm just kidding, but I'm speaking into our future, right? (laughs) But like, go fix it. it. Yeah. But that's such a deep thing because I don't think that, uh, you know, a lot of times we say women are so complicated. And so I think that men sometimes, and we're making very big generalizations based off of our experiences living in both those bodies, right? Mm -hmm. You living in a male body and me living in a female Mm -hmm. body being full of woman and, and doing things by God's design and creation for man and female, male and, you know, man and woman. But just thinking about, um, how that can be very challenging to get into the person's feelings and thoughts and, you know, to really interpret and understand it the way that they understand it. I think a lot of times women, we get this, bad rep that were complicated and so rather than taking the time to understand what we're dealing with or experiencing we get labeled like oh she's just having a mood or mm-hmm. she's complicated or it's that time of the month i remember angry at the beginning, black woman or exactly she's somebody emotional used to, somebody used to call me angry black woman in college and i used to get so upset about that but i remember um i'm angry when we before before um you really took this scripture to heart you used to say something that used to just what they say grind my gears you used to say to me uh have you eaten and i'm like excuse me to defend myself <laughs> no 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 you used to ask Even though me i'm not understanding when right was, now <laughs> when i was having a mood you used to say have you eaten and i feel like that was so disrespectful we're past it now but i used to feel like it was so disrespectful because i was literally expressing myself in a place and you were saying yeah 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 okay i get it eat something because when you eat something then you won't feel that way and granted sometimes i did eat something Most and it did go. <laughs> okay shut up but sometimes i did eat something and it did go the like the initial sting went away but the core of the emotion was still very much so there you know i asked you you didn't i wanted and it wasn't and like what all those things yeah yeah i i'm guilty right <laughs> and um i, I the two Message. To, to talk more <laughs> about that point too there were times where after you ate you could communicate it better that's true so that was sometimes the reason for it i feel that way about you with sex that makes sense yeah that i mean that makes sense because i think it everything is lowered your guard we're gonna have to put a parental advisory up for this one but (laughs) everything is like lowered and then also to you like whatever you need okay (laughs) i'm walking on sunshine and to to Something I was thinking about as you were speaking was this scripture becomes a lot easier to walk in when I'm in love. When I love my wife, Mm. like, and thinking about it like this, when I was pursuing you, Mm -hmm. right? And it was like, talk about it, talk about it. I knew you liked um, (laughs) Coca-Cola. Yeah. And so when we would go out to eat, it, it felt like a badge of honor to be like, 
what are you guys having to drink? She'll have a (laughs) Coca-Cola because I loved you and I studied you and I watched what you liked. I understood, okay, her drink of choice is Coca-Cola. Yeah. And so I was like, she'll have a Coca-Cola and I'll have a water, right? Mm Because this is early when we were dating at the time. I grew up like, my parents were like, when we go out, you get water, right? (laughs) My wife grew up like, when you go out, you get to drink what you want to drink. <laughs> because, listen, you only going out. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you you freed me up in a lot of ways. And, um, I and feel that way about vacation, too. When I'm on vacation, I'm like, whatever goes on vacation. Because when you come back home, you got bills, you got other things you got to deal with. So you just bother Enjoy control. yourself, yeah. And um, so when... And and then it was up until the point where I was like, she'll have a Coke. And you're like, actually, it's breakfast. I'll have orange juice. And I was like. <laughs> Curveball. Right. Do you really know her? <laughs> you don't. And so, um, but I, when, when, when you're in love, it's mm-hmm. easy to be like, let me start from the place of understanding mm-hmm. versus true. start from the place of I want to be understood. It's true. You're going to understand what I'm saying, woman. So hear my point. And you're like, you're going to understand what I'm saying. Mm. So hear my point. And now everybody's fighting for understanding and no one's understanding. Right. A lot of times what I see, um, you bring up a good point that everybody's fighting for that same thing to be. And, and, you know, as a marriage family therapist, sometimes I look at people and though I'm trained in it and have my own relationships and I kind of can see these things. Sometimes when I look at people, my heart breaks because I'm like. You literally are saying the same exact thing to each other and you're saying it in a different way, but your eyes and ears are so blocked off to what the other person is saying that you can't even hear them because Mm -hmm. you're not speaking their language or listening, you know, with good intent. Um, Someone once told us, um, remember when Pastor Hudgens said to us, shout uh, out to Pastor Hudgens. Yeah. When he said to us, believe the best about each other super that was like rich for us at the nugget. time when it came out and we still chew on it today. still chew on that believe the best and so a lot of times when things are happening i'm saying to myself he wasn't intentionally trying to hurt me he's probably having a bad day mm-hmm. and when i when i detour mm-hmm. that way i'm less frustrated and less likely to um play the victim mm-hmm. in a lot of things because i'm saying oh it's not even about you talk about it's the play about, the victim stop what do you mean exactly i it's interesting because coming to understanding right right um oh okay so right so i'm I'm asking because i'm like is that from my habit of making you feel like um you have to be the victim or is like where 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 does the the victim starting place come that then has to be corrected to believing the best? Um, that's a great question. I'm not sure that I've even taken time to think that through and understand that. And if I'm clear on what you're asking, are you saying, are you asking me, did you do something um, knowingly, unknowingly to cause me to, play the victim role and kind of shut down in conversation. Yeah. Or is that something that just happened? Is that what you're saying? I guess a little bit of both. I'm wondering on one hand, and this is cool because we're modeling understanding. So this is why this is a really interesting moment. (laughs) Um, But in one instance, I'm like, it would seem obvious to believe the best about someone. Like we're learning now with our child. You can't discipline them out the womb because they don't know. (laughs) So I have to understand his intention isn't to like scream in public. Yeah. 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 But it's really like, Hey, this is all I know how to do to communicate with you guys. Yeah. My diaper's wet. I'm hungry mm-hmm. or I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's easier for us to be like, Oh, let me check his needs mm-hmm. before I discipline. Mm-hmm. Whereas it seems as an adult, you discipline first or you try to correct someone else first before mm-hmm. you come from a place of understanding yeah and so i guess i was asking for you and maybe this is just maybe it's as a woman thing i'm mm-hmm. asking you from a woman's perspective why do you think that is for you and then i could talk about it from a man's perspective go from a man's perspective first i got you so a lot of times from a man's perspective we are fighting for respect mm-hmm. i think that's why in scripture you see 
that wives are to submit to their husbands. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, translated um, not like, Bow I'm gonna, down. or not even like not it's it's even like i'm i'm gonna serve you and shut up it's not that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but Which it's is a like a whole other topic for a whole <laughs> other time i believe it but i see <laughs> it as like uh, respect your husbands mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. if your husband's like dang like dang you you see you see what your husband needs and you're like i'm gonna just watch him struggle with her <laughs> idiot look at this <laughs> fumbling tripping and woman like do this it's like that person you don't in the know car. what he's doing it's god like bless that person in the car that sees you going the wrong way and knows and you let it happen way. yeah you just there letting it happen. Then, then when you ask them they're like i thought you knew exactly. how you thought i knew yeah. if i made a yeah. left how you thought i yeah. knew okay yeah. i did not know and so i i see it as like i see it as like the respect thing like okay i see him like let me try to help to let me help let me be when you go bowling. I'm gonna help to be the the buffer mm -hmm. so that you don't go into the gutter. So it's mm -hmm. like bing bing bing, and mm -hmm. you bounce back, mm -hmm. right? And so husbands really need that respect. It's tied to their identity. It's tied to their a lot of times their ability to be able to like yeah, I can do this. I can conquer this thing. Yeah. Um, and for women, it says for the husband's role it says to love your wife, mm -hmm. right? Because if I love you, I'm going to submit myself or sit with you long enough to know yeah. what you need yeah so in some sense there's a submission on both sides but it's said so powerfully in that like guys i know you're not going to have an issue with this other stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and right. women, i know you will have an issue loving your husband right because woman, once you are in this relationship you're going to give of yourself exactly like if, and you and left and right i've watched my wife do it consistently like she gives of herself i don't question if my wife loves me i question if she respects me i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding but uh but like in that way i'm like wow this makes so much sense and a lot of times i i hear in the tone of how my wife speaks like do you love me like okay if you love me like um i feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. because i don't have help mm -hmm. so i don't feel like you love me because you don't act like mm -hmm. you love mm -hmm. me reminds me of an old song back in the day um they were my mom used to play it all the time but they say like if you love me say it mm. if you want me show it if you need me prove it mm. and so it's like this call and this this call to action of the man yeah. from the woman to say you are saying these things but if these things be true then follow those things up with other things so right. a great book for you to check out um it's on amazon and i'll leave the link below for you to check it out um it's called love and respect and it talks about the respect he desperately needs right and so it compares that idea of love for woman um, being equal to respect for the man. And it's by Dr. Emerson Egerich. So I'll link that below and you can check that out on Amazon. It's a good read if you are struggling to uh, come to agreement or understand your husband um, or your wife um, or your partner. Um, I think, you know, one of the, one I was going to say is as a marriage family therapist, I think this leads a lot of couples to divorce mm. in that there are walls that are resurrected on disagreement. Mm -hmm. And when the Bible talks about two walking together in agreement, it literally is like we can't we can't be friends <laughs> and be in this relationship if we can't get along and understand each other. Yeah. It doesn't mean we have to agree with everything that, you know. I don't have to like blue because you like blue. That's like very cheap. Right. Yes. But it's like are our core things in the same. I, I, you know, I was just thinking about this. I talk to, when I talk to girls who are dating guys who are not Christian and who are Christian, the girls are Christian, the guys are not Christian mm -hmm. and they are like, but I like him, but he's cute, but we wear red together. And because <laughs> literally that's these days he likes life. to walk around the park. <laughs> exactly. Too. Exactly. It's like, girl, you better find a man with some brains in his yeah. hand. Um, Cause he really wants your body. <laughs> exactly. That box. Okay. Come on. But uh, I was going to say, so when I hear them talking about their partner and like, if they're thinking about being with them or whatever, I, and they're Christian, and I say to them, and they're asking for this advice, I'll say to them, you know, God is not saying be equally 
yoked for like this random purpose. But what he's saying is if you believe in tithing and you are giving to me in my kingdom, if he does not believe in tithing, it's going to cause conflict in your marriage. Definitely. And he's going to say, where are you bringing this money to? Yeah. Why are you always at church? You don't Why respect you always got to go to exactly. Why do you always have to go to these church meetings or whatever y'all do at your church? Right. Mm hmm. So it will cause conflict in the home already day one, day zero, it will cause conflict. And so there's this idea about like, you know, walking together in agreement that looks like we have the same or similar foundational pieces. And if any of those are shaky, it's probably not a relationship that you should pursue or pursue with caution and prayer. Mm. Um, Because a lot of times girls, we feel like, oh, if I've invested a certain amount of time, yeah, you're right. You're right. In the relationship, then, uh, excuse me, y'all. But if I've invested a certain amount of time in the relationship, then I have to marry him now mm-hmm. or I have to be with him long term. And it's like, no, girl, at the end, at the end of the day, marriage is for a Life. lifetime. And so if he's showing you signs today that he is not faithful, mm-hmm. that he is not, uh, you know, willing to serve you and help you and push you to be where you're supposed to be in life and, you know, able to have grace with you. If he's not showing those things that are important to you today, believe him, sister girl, (laughs) sister girl, brother, man. Yeah. Believe these folks. Yeah. Believe Believe these folks. Yeah. Cause you will cause a lot of heartache and pain for yourself long term. Okay. So wait, we're going to make sure at the next podcast because you are hitting so many nails we're building this house beautifully (laughs) and we're going to talk about what does it look like what should you look for when you're looking to date no that's a good question it is something that you were just starting to hit on but before we go i want to know the answer to your question the question that i asked you about woman and from the woman's perspective and this place of starting from victim and getting to the point of understanding why is that the default what what goes on in a woman's mind when it's like but why me or how did this you know i think that uh women naturally want to be understood and we naturally want to be loved and i think that a lot of times uh again you guys might hear my baby in the background because we're we're parents and this is kind of what happens right but a lot of times uh, we want to be understood and not for nothing. A girl will go through much more heartbreak, I think, in my opinion, than a guy ever will by the time they're even 18. I remember <laughs> when I was a young girl having moments where I would like write little you know, messages to boys that I liked or one boy specifically. And when I wrote this message to him, uh, I said, hey, you know, I like you. Do you like me type of thing? Like circle, yes or no. I was super young. And the boy didn't even, he didn't even give me the respect to circle no, okay? He threw the letter underneath the, uh, underneath the the trailer that we were, uh, our classrooms were in trailers. I lived in Georgia. So our classrooms were in trailers and he threw the daggone letter underneath the trailer And I was so hurt by that. And that happened when I was like elementary school. And so I was super hurt by that. And I think that started this like victim where you talk about this victim mentality of like, dang, you know, that really hurt my feelings. And it, I mean, that was, I was what, 10 and it didn't stop. It probably was like very consistently. I can (laughs) name off some of the little crushes that we have, but as girls, we have crushes. And then the next day they're not crushes anymore. And you know, you guys may also have crushes, but it it just doesn't look the same for a girl. So we typically get our hearts broken more times. And so by the time we are an adult and we're in thriving relationships at this point, we're like, what are you getting ready to do? And so we're kind of on the lookout for BS, should I say. And, you know, granted, we come from different places. And so our our world informs us differently but many girls go into relationships and really go in saying oh my gosh I want to fall in love and I want to 
you know, have all of these fun moments with this person. And so, excuse me. And so, uh, I think it comes from, from that place for me, um, of feeling like I've been in this situation before. There was a a good song back in the day and she used to say, I heard it all before all of your lies and all of your sweet talk, baby, this baby that, but your lies ain't working now. (laughs) And so, you know, I also grew up on that kind of music too. So I think, you know, we're talking about the things that go into people and the, the, the formulation of thought and, and understanding of the world around them. Minds comes from nineties and early two thousands R and B songs. So, so my perspective on things are, you know, Mary J. Blige sang about it. You know, <laughs> all these women in the nineties and early two thousands were singing about these men who did them wrong and who they not going to cry no more because it's, it's, you know, it's done and they're going to move on. So I think, that has probably been a part of my, you know, foundation of like somebody's going to hurt me at some point in time and I'm kind of waiting for it to happen, which is like sad and unfortunate to think about, but, um, I know I'm not the only one. So I hope that answers, um, your question a bit. Yeah, it definitely does. That makes a ton of sense. (laughs) So, again, we're going to keep talking about this and other topics on the podcast. Stay tuned. Keep listening. Um, This is so much fun. So this is really great um, to do. And we hope that you will continue to join us the next time. We'll see you again next